Mongolia, a land of mystique and marvels, where the vast expanses of the Gobi Desert meet the rugged beauty of the Altai Mountains. It is a country where nomadic traditions seamlessly blend with modern influences, creating a tapestry of culture that's both rich and diverse. From the bustling markets of Ulaanbaatar to the serene landscapes of the Kufsgul Lake, Mongolia beckons adventurers with its untamed beauty. Today, we're embarking on an extraordinary journey to unravel the hidden gems and surprising facts that make Mongolia a truly unique destination. A vast landlocked country nestled between Russia and China, where the western edge is just a stone's throw away from Kazakhstan. Mongolia spans a whopping 1.5 million square kilometers, that's more than 600,000 square miles, making it the world's largest landlocked country without a bordering closed sea. But get this, with a population of just 3.3 million, it's also one of the most sparsely populated sovereign states on our planet. Mongolia boasts a diverse terrain, from the lush grassy steppe to the towering mountains in the north and west, and not to forget the iconic Gobi Desert stretching out to the south. And right in the midst of it all is Ulaanbaatar, the capital and largest city, where half of Mongolia's population calls home. But let's rewind a bit and explore Mongolia's incredible past. This land has witnessed the rise and fall of nomadic empires, from the Xiongnu to the first and second Turkic Khaganates. Fast forward to 1206, and here comes the legend Genghis Khan. He founded the Mongol Empire, the largest contiguous land empire in history. And did you know his grandson Kublai Khan conquered China and established the Yuan Dynasty? However, history is a roller coaster. After the Yuan Dynasty collapsed, Mongolia experienced factional conflicts until the 16th century, when Tibetan Buddhism found its way into this vast land. The Qing Dynasty took control in the 17th century, leaving its mark until the early 20th century, when Mongolia declared independence, becoming a satellite state of the Soviet Union in 1921. But wait, there's more. Fast forward to the 1990s. After the fall of communism elsewhere, Mongolia embarked on its own peaceful democratic revolution. The result? A multi-party system, a brand new constitution in 1992, and a switch to a market economy. Talk about resilience and determination. Now, let's zoom into the present. Mongolia today is a captivating blend of tradition and modernity. Approximately 30% of the population maintains a nomadic or semi-nomadic lifestyle keeping the ancient horse culture alive and well. Buddhism takes the lead as the majority religion, with a unique 40.6% identifying as non-religious. And did you know Islam has a significant presence among the ethnic Kazakhs? Diversity is the name of the game here. The majority are ethnic Mongols, but you'll also find Kazakhs, Tuvans, and other ethnic minorities, especially in the Western regions. Mongolia isn't just a spectator, it's an active player on the global stage. A member of the United Nations Asia Cooperation Dialogue, G77, and a NATO global partner. Plus, Mongolia joined the World Trade Organization in 1997, showcasing its commitment to economic and trade growth. Number one, the world's coldest capital city. If you're not familiar, Ulaanbaatar is the bustling heartbeat of Mongolia, nestled in the north central part of the country. Picture this, a city at 1,300 meters above sea level cradled in a valley formed by the Tool River. It's not just a geographical marvel, but it's also home to nearly half of Mongolia's population. Now, that's a lot of people braving the cold, and you're about to find out why. Ulaanbaatar is not just cold, it's the world's coldest capital. Can you believe that? The annual average temperature hovers around minus 1.3 degrees Celsius. Now, let's break that down. The summers, well, they're short and warm, but the winters, oh boy, they're a different story. Extremely dry and bitterly cold. In January, temperatures can plummet to jaw-dropping lows of 36 to 40 degrees Celsius. That's not just cold, it's a deep freeze. Imagine bundling up in layers upon layers just to step outside. It's no wonder the locals here have mastered the art of staying warm. Ulaanbaatar experiences a stark contrast between summer and winter. Summers are short but sweet with temperatures reaching a comfortable level, making it the perfect time for exploration. However, when winter arrives, it transforms into a winter wonderland, albeit a frosty one. Despite the bone-chilling temperatures, Ulaanbaatar is a city that thrives. The resilience of its people in the face of such challenging weather is truly awe-inspiring. 
From unique winter traditions to the warmth of the nomadic hospitality, there's so much more to this cold capital than meets the eye. Number two, more horses than people. They say, a Mongol without a horse is like a bird without wings. And that sentiment reflects the deep connection between the Mongolian people and their four-legged companions. So here's the kicker. There are over 3 million horses in Mongolia, outnumbering the human population that just tips over 3 million. You might wonder, what's the deal with all these horses? Well, in Mongolia, horses are not just for show. They play a crucial role in daily life. They're used for riding. And here's a fun fact. Mare's milk is a popular beverage. And yes, sometimes unfortunately, they're even slaughtered for meat. Nomadic Mongols, known for their herding lifestyle, often have camels, oxen, yaks, sheep, and goats. But having a herd of horses is a status symbol, a sign of wealth. In fact, back in the day, the horse played a significant role in the wars led by the legendary Genghis Khan. Even today, Mongolian people are celebrated as great riders. Horses hold spiritual significance for the Mongols. They believe that the spirit of a deceased horse can impact the living herd. And get this, they think the horse's spirit resides in its mane. So, a long, thick mane symbolizes a strong and powerful horse. Number 3. Naya Dam Festival – The Olympic Games of Mongolia July in Mongolia and the entire nation is swept up in the spirit of the Naya Dam Festival. It's like their own version of the Olympics, and the reason behind it is fascinating. The festival commemorates the 1921 revolution, marking the moment when Mongolia declared its independence. And just like the Olympics, the opening ceremony in Ulaanbaatar is the hottest ticket in town. The opening ceremony is a spectacle that will leave you in awe. It's a vibrant showcase of Mongolian culture, with processions, military parades, and ethnic dances. The colors, the outfits, the singing, and the dancing, it's a feast for the eyes. If you happen to be in Mongolia in July, this is one super fun fact you absolutely can't afford to miss. The Nadam Festival, or as the locals call it, Erien Gurvan Nadam, which translates to the Three Games of Men. And guess what? These three games are at the core of the entire celebration wrestling, archery, and horse riding. These three sports are not just a part of the festival. They are the festival. Wrestlers grapple, archers aim true, and horse riders showcase their incredible skills. It's a celebration of athleticism and tradition, all rolled into one. Number four, Mongols drink fermented horse milk. Before you wrinkle your nose and dismiss it, let's understand the significance of this unique beverage. Arag is not just a drink, it's a cultural cornerstone for the nomadic families of Mongolia. Picture this, you enter a traditional Mongolian dwelling called a jir, and before you even settle in, you're offered a bowl of arag. It's not just hospitality, it's a tradition, and refusing it is considered rude. So let's get into the nitty gritty of how this drink comes to be. Nomadic families in Mongolia keep a diverse array of wildlife around their jeers, including horses, camels, goats, and more. The milk from the mare, the female horse, is collected and stored. But here's where it gets interesting. Instead of chugging it down fresh, they let it ferment. Yes, you heard it right, fermented horse milk. Over time, this liquid undergoes a magical transformation into what they call erag. And believe me, it's a staple in the daily lives of pastoral nomadic families who consume generous amounts of it throughout the day. It's not just about the taste. Mare's milk holds spiritual importance for the Mongols. It's not uncommon to see it used in religious ceremonies, sprinkled on the ground before a battle for good luck, or even showered on a victorious horse after a race. Taking a sip of arag or tossing it into the air is a common practice, symbolizing blessings and celebrations. It's a unique way for the Mongols to connect with their heritage and share in the joy of special moments. Number five, the most polluted capitals in the world. Did you know that Ulaanbaatar, the capital city, is considered one of the most polluted capitals in the world? But before we get into the details, let me hit you with some mind-blowing stats. The total population of Mongolia is just a bit over three million. Now, imagine this. Nearly half of that population, around 1.38 million people, call Ulaanbaatar home. What's been causing this surge in pollution? Well, over the past decade, there's been a massive influx of nomadic families into Ulaanbaatar. These families, seeking better opportunities, have migrated to the capital in search of a more settled life. While this urbanization has its benefits, it comes at a hefty cost. 
a spike in pollution and smog levels across the city. With the growing population, Ulaanbaatar has seen a rapid increase in construction, industries, and vehicular traffic. This urban development has significantly contributed to the rise in air pollution. But that's not all. The city also faces extreme temperatures, with harsh winters that lead to increased use of coal for heating, further worsening the air quality. In fact, Ulaanbaatar gained international attention when Time magazine famously dubbed it the world's most polluted capital city. It's a title no city wants, but it serves as a wake-up call for the urgent need to address the environmental challenges facing Mongolia's capital. Number 6. Biggest Consumer of Sheep in the World Mongolia is a country with a rich nomadic tradition, and their cuisine reflects the harsh conditions they face, especially during those bone-chilling winter months. Forget about your typical veggie-filled plates. In Mongolia, it's all about dairy, meat, and animal fats. But here's where it gets really interesting. The most common rural dish across the entire country is cooked mutton. Mongolia holds the title for being the biggest consumer of sheep and goat meat per capita in the entire world. That's right, folks, more than any other country out there. Can you believe it? It's a carnivore's paradise and maybe a bit of a nightmare for our vegan and vegetarian friends. Mongolia takes their meat seriously, and when it comes to sheep and goat, they're at the top of the food chain. And just to spice things up a bit more, did you know that the average Mongolian consumes, insert fun statistic for example, over 40 kilograms of sheep and goat meat per person annually? That's like having your own personal flock on standby. But why is Mongolian cuisine so meat-centric? Well, it all comes down to survival in the face of extreme weather conditions. Fruits and veggies are a bit of a rarity, mostly imported, and not the star players in the Mongolian diet. You see, their culinary choices are designed to withstand the cold and support the nomadic lifestyle that many Mongolians lead. Picture this, vast expanses of the Mongolian steppes, where temperatures can plummet to jaw-dropping lows. In such extreme conditions, a diet rich in meat and animal fats becomes a necessity for survival. It's not just about flavor, it's about staying warm and energized in the midst of a freezing winter. And speaking of lifestyle, with a significant portion of the population being nomadic, traditional farming isn't exactly the go-to source for sustenance. The ability to move and adapt to different grazing lands is crucial, and the nomads have perfected the art of utilizing their livestock for survival. Number seven, Mongolia's currency has no coins. You might be wondering, why no coins? Well, let me break it down for you. In Mongolia, it's all about the paper. The smallest unit of their currency is in note form, and it's not just a quirk, it's official. Imagine having a wallet with no loose change. Pretty neat, huh? To put things into perspective, let's talk exchange rates. One US dollar translates to approximately 2,500 Mongolian Tugriks. That means if you've got a dollar to spare, you're walking away with a hefty stack of Tugriks. Now that's what I call a unique currency experience. Now let's dive into the world of Mongolian notes. The highest value note you can get your hands on is a 20,000 Tugrik note. Picture this, it's worth around $8. That's right, $8 in a single note. And from there, it works its way down. So, forget about fumbling with small change. Mongolians are all about the big bills. Here's a fun fact to sprinkle on top. The designs on these notes aren't just your average banknote illustrations. Mongolia takes it up a notch. You'll find depictions of historical figures, traditional Mongolian symbols, and even the breathtaking landscapes that this country has to offer. It's like holding a piece of Mongolia's rich culture right in your hands. Number eight, festival dedicated to eagle hunting. Imagine a festival that's not just about music and dance, but also about the incredible bond between humans and majestic golden eagles. That's what the Golden Eagle Festival is all about taking place annually over two days in the stunning landscapes of Mongolia. The festival kicks off with a breathtaking horseback procession of eagle hunters. These skilled hunters proudly showcase their extravagant outfits and accessories, each telling a story of tradition and heritage. It's like stepping into a world where the past meets the present. The sight of these hunters on horseback, adorned in vibrant colors and intricate details, is a spectacle in itself. But that's just the beginning of the magic. Let's talk about the main stars of the show, the Golden Eagles. These magnificent birds are not just for show, they are judged for their speed and strength. It's like a beauty pageant, but for eagles. The judges carefully observe as these incredible creatures spread their wings and take flight. 
The festival becomes a stage where the eagles showcase their prowess, and it's a sight you won't forget. The real thrill begins when the eagles are released from the cliffs, soaring through the crisp Mongolian air. Picture this. The birds gracefully diving down to the awaiting arms of their skilled hunters. It's a breathtaking moment that symbolizes the ancient art of eagle hunting. The connection between the hunters and their eagles is truly a testament to the rich cultural heritage of Mongolia. It's not just a sport. It's a tradition passed down through generations, creating a bond that goes beyond words. And there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this journey with me. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more amazing content, and let me know in the comments if you'd like to explore more unique festivals around the world.